Hi, my name's Miles, and this is the... Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's the electronics episode for my 2011 Ford Transit Connect, which I purchased a few months ago to convert into a living working space so that I could travel the country and tell a few interesting stories. One of those stories is about my grandmother, Amelia. It's actually a 10 part series. And the first part of that series is currently linked down below in the description, plus four other projects which are currently in development. So if you just follow the link, and if you like it, like, comment, share, and subscribe, it'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm. In this episode, you're going to see me put in my electronics bay and the, and the, uh, the subsystems, the components, and uh, mount it and then wire it all up and then put in my battery box, wire that, and basically at the end of this episode, I should have power for my van. Way cool. Uh, before, but before we get to that, I have to do a little bit of business. And one of those little pieces of business is, you see the guy on the screen? That's Larry Treen. And if it weren't for Larry, basically I would not be here on multiple levels. Uh, basically I've been peppering Larry with questions and he's been preparing me for this episode, Six Ways from Sunday. It has changed format so many times it's not even funny at this point. So if it weren't for Larry, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you to Larry. Which brings me to another thank you that absolutely needs to be said. This is a crowdfunded project at this point. I ran out of money about three months ago and every dollar that, that, is, that, that has come in from, from point A to point B has gone right into this project and I basically have no money left to eat on. So if you can you know, find it in your heart to donate $3, $5, $7, whatever you can afford, trust me, it'll go a long way to making those projects that I just talked about actually happen because I'm out of money. So $3, $5, $7, whatever you can afford, it'll make things much easier. Uh, last little piece of business before we dive into the episode is if you like this stuff, you find it useful, you find it helpful, then do me a kind courtesy and hit the like button and the subscribe button and the notifications bell to be, uh, to no to be notified every single time I upload new content. I think that is enough yapping, so let's get right into the episode and actually power my van. Yes!
you're seeing is my battery setup. These are flooded lead acid batteries. These are six volt batteries, 230 amp hours each. So it's running in series and parallel, 430 amp hours of battery power. That's all you need to know. Some people are gonna say, well, why didn't you get, why didn't you get uh, 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 lithium ion? Uh, lithium ion, for those with actual pockets, I didn't have lithium ion money. So not so much for that idea. Flooded lead acid is what I had money for, so that's what I got. And truth be told, I got a lot more, I got way more power than, than, I, than, I, than I could ever ask for. So that's what those batteries are for. So what you're seeing here is a whole lot of spaghetti wire mess, but I will explain what that spaghetti wire mess is. So what you're looking at is a uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, not a pure sine wave inverter charger. I'll explain why in just a little bit. Uh, a solar, uh, a solar charger controller, uh, 20 amp, a transfer switch, which almost never, you almost never see, uh, a breaker switch, two, bu two bus bars, and quite literally the heart of my system is my power center converter. Kind of sort of important. And last but not least is pretty much the, 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 the way in which I charge I, at this point about 80% of the time, which is the um, battery isolator switch is what you're seeing right now. All right, so those are, my, those are my components. All of the components are listed and linked down below in the description. So if you wanna go get, go get. All right, so let's talk about this guy because this is what everybody thinks of as the heart of their system and they'd be wrong. Uh, this is an inverter, a pure sine wave inverter, not a pure sine wave inverter charger, which I'll explain in just a little bit. So the pure sine wave thing is kind of sort of important. If you're running sensitive at electronics, it doesn't matter what they are. You do not want a modified sine wave inverter. You want a pure sine wave inverter. The pure sine wave inverter, it basically it allows me to run sen my sensitive electronics. That's all that that means. So the larger the number, the more stuff you, the, the, the higher wattage you can run. It's that simple, but you have to have a battery pack to handle it. And I have a battery pack to handle it. All right. Now that quite literally, this is not the heart of the system. If this were an inverter charger, then it would be the heart of the system, but it is not an inverter charger. It's just the inverter. And the reason I did that is because of this guy, because this is basically a 30 amp charger. Uh, it allows me to run, basically, it, it allows me to charge independent of the inverter, which is kind of sort of important. Um, but it also allows me to run off of shore power, which is what this guy is. However, the real trick of the system is this guy right here, and that's the transfer switch. This transfer switch allows me to essentially act as in a user, user simple fashion. What that means is that I don't need to worry about where my power is coming from because when it senses power coming from A, B, or C, it switches automatically and then charges the batteries. It does not matter which one is which. So I can charge off of off the engine. I can charge charge off of solar uh, uh, off of uh, um, uh, shore power. I can charge off of solar if I need to. And the transfer switch, that guy allows me to do that. So. Uh, that's that that thing is like a, a godsend as far as I'm concerned. All right, now that the, the real heart of this system, and you're gonna think to yourself that this is the heart of the system. It's not. It's actually the power center. The power center acts as my my fuse box and my 110. So it does two. It does those two things at the same time while. It's also acting as a converter, which means it allows me to, to transfer all of that energy that I'm capturing from three different sources and then p plug that stuff all directly into my battery. So let's get into the, the wiring mess here. And you're going to think to yourself, that's, a, that's really confusing. It's not. All of the black and red, the thin black and red wire, that is 12 gauge stuff. Uh, and that is for my 12 volt stuff. And that goes right, that all gets wired directly into here. And that comes into this stuff. That's what you see, uh, this, these, this wire mess right here. And you'll notice that I've labeled it all. Um, this runs my pump, my lights, my fan, my, um, my refrigerator is all running off of 12 volt. 
kind of sort of important. And the reason why you want to run off of 12 volt and not 110 is because it's is because when you run off of 110 for so you want 12 volt you don't want to run off of 110 except when you need uh except when you have sensitive electronics like this guy is ha is handling right now it's uh, it allows me to run the uh, my ipad or charge my ipad it allows me to charge my iphone it allows me to charge my my um my my laptop so that i don't have to worry about whether or not the the charge is right what does it mean uh, so there are basically two types of uh, two types of inverters: modified sine wave and, and and pure sine wave. Pure sine wave is what most modern electronics absolutely needs in order to run. Modified sine wave doesn't give a rat's frack about your uh, about your electronics. It just runs what it it just sends power and lets the the device handle it, like a refrigerator could handle it, but your iPhone or your iPad could pretty much not handle. Uh, a, uh, a modified sine wave. So you absolutely need a pure sine wave inverter. It's that simple. All right, next on the list is the, uh, is the solar, par uh, solar charger controller. Uh, solar charge controller. Basically at this point, that solar, charger con solar charge controller is not really, it's, it's, it's wired up so that I can, um, so that I can charge my batteries. But there's nothing. There's no. There, there's no solar panel here, uh, because I basically haven't installed them yet, and I need to install them. Even though they work, I have two hundred. I basically have two hundred watts of solar power. All right, let's move on. Uh, this guy right here is my is my breaker switch. What you're seeing right here are are two wires. This is the battery positive, and this is the battery negative. Uh, this wire is running off the battery the the positive side of my battery box and it's coming directly into the breaker switch so that if I need to kill the battery, I can do it right from here or I can disconnect the batteries. And that battery positive is running directly into the inverter so that if I need power here, I can grab it to the, to the 110 side. And there's also the battery negative, which is also running right to the battery negative side of the, of the, power, of, of the pure sine wave inverter. So basically, I have all the power I need running positive and negative. Now for the bus bars. This is basically where all the, all the wires are basically running into so that I don't need to run all of my connections right through, let's see, right through, it. not everything has to be here and not everything has to be here. So the whole reason why you have bus bars is so that you can, uh, you're, you're not, all of your connections are not coming directly into the battery or, ne or coming directly out of the battery. Uh, you can connect them to the bus bar so that you can patiently manage those cables. That's all a bus bar does. All right, um, let's talk about this guy just a little bit more and then we're almost done. All right, so my power center uh, converter. Uh, basically, this allows me to run my fan, my lights, my uh, refrigerator, and my water pump all, on, all off of my 12 volt. And this allows me to run my, this is my 110 side, and it allows me to run my, uh, uh, my sensitive elect electronics. That power center is incredibly, uh, is incredibly powerful, uh, and it also allows me to run my, my basically, uh, it acts as a converter, a 30 amp converter, so that I can basically charge my batteries if I need to. Uh, it's, it's been rewired slightly uh, so that that, 30 amp charger goes directly into the transfer switch. That's it, that's all. All right, so to wrap this all up, and it does not need to get that, that complex. There are a couple of things that I'd like you to know uh, that you absolutely need to know going forwards. One is that this is not user complex, it really isn't. It just requires your, your, you wrapping your head around this stuff uh, for more than a few hours and it may require you to go out and hire an electrician if you are not electrically minded. And most people aren't. 
So go hire an electrician to help him map out, help him or her map out your system so that you can not end up in a fireball. That would be bad. That would be bad if you follow my meaning. All right, so that's one. Two is something I should have, uh, I, I should have wrapped my mind around before I did this or while I was doing this, and I did. And I just, it just, I wasn't making the connection between uh, X and Y. So I'm gonna make the connection now. Um, early on, Larry had me map out how much power I would need. And I'm like, okay, why do I need to do that? Just, can't we just like wire up some batteries and get buy an inverter and, and be done? No, you can, but it doesn't help you. So the reason why you wanna map out how much power you need is so that you can properly size your system to your batteries and, and your inverter. That's why you're doing that. So map out how much wattage you, you, your, <clears throat> your devices require. And then add about 20%. And then size the system appropriately to, to power that. That's it. That's all you need to do. It does not get any more complex than that. Uh, that 20% gives you a little bit more headroom. Um, the reason why you want a, a, a fairly powerful inverter is so that you do not have to worry about whether or not your inverter can handle the load. I'll, I'll give you an example. So if you wanna run, say, uh, uh, a microwave, which is uh, on the low end at 750 watts, um, it's gonna, it, it's, that's on the, on the low end as it's running. However, it needs an enormous amount of power to start up that process. And that usually will top out a thousand watt inverter. Uh, they usually uh, spike to about 1250 and then drop down to seven, 750 watts. So you're gonna think, well, I need a 1250 watt inverter. Well, they don't make 1250 watt inverters. They make 1500 watt inverter, 1500 watt inverters, 2000 watt inverters. Um, but you also need something slightly more than that so that it can handle the surge and then come uh, and then can come down. So you need a fairly powerful inverter so that your batteries can actually draw that amount of power and that your, your device doesn't shut down in the middle of your operation. That's why you want a fairly powerful inverter. So me getting a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter is kind of sort of important so that I don't need to diddle in any way, shape or form. And it's also, it has, a, it has um, well, let me do that the right way so you can actually see it. It also has surge power up to 4,000 watts. So basically, I'm covered six ways from Sunday. All right, so uh, that pretty much wraps it up. It does not get any more complex than that, kitties. It really doesn't. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Um, it's gonna make you feel a little, a, a little intimidated. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, this was really intimidating for me, and and I know dick about you know um, uh, electronics, and I consider myself to be halfway, you know, halfway intelligent. And I was intimidated by it. All right. If there's one more thing I could tell you, it's uh, you absolutely need a battery monitor. Now this system does actually have a battery monitor in it, and it's a piece of crap. I absolutely need another one, and I will show you the one on screen that you absolutely want to go get. Um, it's it, it does not have it is what's referred to as a headless battery monitor, um, but you can monitor that stuff on your phone. So do that. So I'm going to go get one of those at some at some later point when I have money. I don't have money right now. I, I I'm basically surviving, and that leads me to the end of the episode. All right. Uh, so. To wrap this all up, take your time, uh, measure out your system, map out your system, and then put it together. Load, uh, map out your loads, and that's you know how much wattage you'll need, plus 20%, and you should be good to go. Wrap your head around this stuff because you are going to need to understand it, and if you don't understand it, you know, hire an electrician to help you to understand what you need to do, and spend, uh, that is money well spent. There are no two ways about that because you do not want to end up in a fireball. Uh, and if that means having them sit there and hold, hand your, you know, hold your hand while you're putting your system together, then do that because it will be really, really helpful. All right, so that you don't end up in a fireball. All right, 
So uh, I think that's pretty much all that I need to yap about today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this is my list of patrons right here. Uh, those folks in bold and gold bold have basically given way more than I could have ever asked for. So thank you very much to my, my list of patrons. And if you'd like to help out the channel, uh, then it'll cost you $3, $5, $7, whatever you can afford. Trust me, it'll help me out in more ways you, you can shake a stick at because this is my, uh, pa my Patreon is my only source of income. I don't have any money at this point. I'm, I'm basically broke. This is a crowdfunded uh, project at this point, so I desperately need your help. So $3, $5, $7, or whatever you can afford. Uh, last but not least, if you find this stuff useful, helpful, if you found it entertaining, then hit the like button the, and then the subscribe button uh, to be, and then the notifications bell to be notified every single time I upload new content. There you go. That is all the, that, that is all the video that is fit to video today, and I look forward to seeing you somewhere on the road. Bye.